guys, Mr. Edwards here, Centerville High School Automotive Technology. Today we're going to be doing a video on tire mounting. So that means taking a tire off the rim and putting a new tire on the rim. Or putting the same tire back on the rim if you're just taking it off to repair it or something of that nature. To do that, uh, we have to use a tire mounting machine, which is this machine behind me here. We're going to get up close to it in just a minute. I'll show you guys the important steps of it to get going with using it um, and take a look at some of the controls on it and everything. Then we'll get a tire over here. We've got a new tire to put on our rim and uh, we'll go from there. Let's take a look at what we got. So this right here is our Hunter 3700 uh, tire mounting machine. It's the same machine you'll see in a lot of shops today. Um, this machine is powered by air pressure, which means the first thing we need to do to be able to use it is to come over here and turn on our valve on the wall um, to give it air pressure through the air hose. And that noise you hear, that's the air tank in it filling up. You saw the roller there come up as air pressure built up in it. So now this machine is essentially turned on and ready to be used. So the first thing that we need to do is get a tire, obviously, that we're going to take off the rim, bring it over here, and I'll show you uh, what we're going to do. So I have a tire on a rim here, and if I come down to it, obviously we have our rim here in the middle, we have our tire, and we want to get this tire off the rim. So there are a couple things that I need to do before I go taking this and putting it up here on the machine. First thing I need to do is get the air out of the tire because I can't separate the tire from the rim if the tire is full of air. The way I need to do that is find my valve stem. Another very important thing, when you're doing this, see if you can wiggle the valve stem. If it moves like this, it's a rubber valve stem. If it doesn't move and it's a metal valve stem, that's going to play a very important role in a minute and we'll talk about what that means. But take a look at that. This is a rubber valve stem obviously because it moves. We're going to take the cap off of it. Do not lose this cap. This cap plays a very important role other than just looking nice because it covers up the threads on there. It prevents any dirt, dust, sand, anything on the side of the road from getting down inside, the, the inside of that valve stem where the valve core is. The valve core is what lets you put air in this tire and take air back out. If dirt, dust, crap gets up inside of there, water, it can corrode or damage that valve stem and cause the tire to start leaking. So, with that cap off, I'm going to set it off to the side so we have it again in a minute. And I need to take out my valve core, which is the middle part inside of there. This tool right here is called a valve core tool. It's got two little teeth on it. If I set it inside of there, it'll lock on just like that. And then lefty loosey, go ahead and unscrew my valve core. And as it comes loose, air will start leaking. And I'm putting a little bit of inward pressure on this because when this valve core screws all the way out, it's gonna wanna shoot out. And if I am not holding it still right now, it'd come shooting out towards you guys over across the shop like a bullet. We don't wanna have that happen. So we wanna let, let it come out just like that. and then all the air comes out of the tire. Once the sound of air leaking stops, all the air is now out of our tire. So we can go ahead and get it separated from the rim. One other thing I need to do real quick before I go uh, putting this up on the machine though, is take any wheel weights off the rim. This right here is a wheel weight, and there might be one on the inside too. See if you see anything cl uh, clamped to the rim lip, which is this outer part of the rim right here that kind of folds over and sticks out. I don't see any wheel weights on the inside, but I've got this one on the outside, right here by the valve stem. The way that I can take this off is with a wheel weight hammer. One end of it looks like a hammer face. That's how you put a wheel weight on when you're balancing the tire. To 
to take it off, the other end of the wheel weight hammer has this little tooth on it that'll lock into the wheel weight and pop it off just like that. Now, these are made out of lead, so we can't just throw these away. These have to be recycled. So we're gonna take this and put it in a special container so that it can be recycled with all the other wheel weights that we have. So now with the air out of my tire and my wheel weights taken off, the last thing I need to do before I can put the tire up here on the machine is get the center cap out of it. If it has a center cap, you need to do this. If it doesn't, this is a step you don't have to worry about. However, to get the center cap out here, I'm just gonna come behind the tire and take something, in this case I'm gonna use the tire iron, punch the center cap out. Just like that, it just snaps in there and snaps out. Now, don't leave this laying on the ground anywhere you could step on it, because this is just plastic. I could snap it in half and it wouldn't look very pretty not having that center cap there. Take this, set it somewhere safe. Now, the next thing I need to do is get my tire separated away from the rim. Again, you don't want to be doing any of this if you still have air in the tire, so that's why we took the valve core out and let all the air out of it. The bead of the tire is the very inner part of the tire where it meets the outside of the rim here. It, the bead of the tire, which you guys will see in a minute, and I'll show it to you when we get the tire off the rim, is the thickest part of the tire, and that's where it seals up against the rim so that it can hold air. I gotta break that bead, I gotta separate it from the tire. The way I'm gonna do that is with this jaw part of the machine that's over there. I'll show you guys how that works right now. So the way that the bead breaking jaw arm over here works is it, it has a handle on it. And if I pull up on the handle, it brings this jaw in. If I push down on it, it takes it back out. So. I'm going to put my tire in here, being really careful to pay attention to where this valve stem is at, because some cars, especially modern cars, any car model year 2007 to current, definitely, has what's called a tire pressure monitoring system, and the sensors that measure the tire pressure are located in the valve stem area. So. I'll move you guys so you can see. I gotta be really careful where this valve stem is at. If this valve stem is in the place where I bring that jaw in, I can snap that tire pressure sensor right off of it. I wanna have this valve stem as far away from where I'm bringing that jaw in as possible so I don't risk damaging it. So I'm gonna come in here, look at where my valve stem's at, and it's all the way away from where that jaw is going to be at. If you need to, you can break the bead in another place around here, but in this case, it's separated it pretty good. We'll flip it around. We've got to break the bead on the inside of the tire too. Again, pay attention to where your valve stem's at. I want this jaw right up against the rim lip, but on the actual tire. I don't want to crush the rim, you know, potentially damage it, but I want to get right on the bead of the tire. And get it separated from the rim. Now, if the tire kind of collapses in like this, that's all right. Just push on it a little bit and it'll bounce back just like that. So now that I've got my bead broken, I wanna go ahead and get my tire mounted up on the machine here. The way I'm gonna do that, bring the rim and tire up, and I need to line up the one of the stud holes where the, you know, the wheel stud would come through and the lug nut would be with this stud on the face of the machine. So I'm gonna line up one of the holes with that, just like that. I'll bring you guys in so you can see, and then center it because the center hole on this mounting plate here is where our lock is gonna come down and lock the rim into place. So I got it centered up, and you guys can see we got our stud right through one of the holes there, our rim is centered up, 
Now over here on the left hand side of the machine, I have my lock right here. And this is what's gonna hold our room still on the machine. Bring it in here, move it around so you feel it drop into place like that, and then push down, twist to the right till it stops moving. Then bring the center part down. If you need to, you can move the rim around some to get it centered up. Tighten it. You don't have to muscle this. You don't have to crank down on it till you snap it in half. This cone isn't made out of plastic, but get that centering cone lined up, get it tight, now it's not going to go anywhere. So I brought you guys over here because I need you to be able to see my hand movements a little bit. Now, up here is our mounting head. This right here is going to come down and this is where I'm going to be doing all my movements to be able to get this tire off the rim and the new one on. So I'm going to bring this down. I'll move you guys down so you can see and set it right on the rim lip where it meets the bead of the tire. There's a pedal down here at the bottom of the machine. I'll move you guys so you can see. Down there. And that pedal, when I step on it, watch what it does. Rotates the uh, rim and tire. So as I step on that pedal, I'm going to drop my head down so it's inside the rim lip where it meets up with the bead of the tire. And it pushed it out a little bit, but I'm trying to use this to separate the rest of the bead. Just like that if you need to. Oops, I need to tighten it up a little bit more. That's all right. If you need to, you can push down on it some. To separate the bead all the way around. Now, I'm going to bring our valve stem, pay attention to where that's at again, up just past where this head meets up with the rim and the tire. So let's see how it's over here, kind of like the one, two o'clock position. And then take my tire iron, which is this tool right here, lives on the side of the machine there, and stick it in this little groove that's in the back of the head that's cut out for it, and pry up and over top of the head. All right, I'll do it one more time so you all can see. Stick it down in there, pry up and over the head part right here that we brought down. Step on the pedal and you guys will see the tire get pulled up and over top of the rim here. Just like that. Now, if I need to, to separate my bottom bead, you guys just saw me, pulled up on the tire a little bit. Now we gotta do the same thing for our bottom bead, and this, where, this is where you kinda gotta do some hand movements. If your rim gets loose like it just did, snug it up again. We're gonna bring this back around so that our valve stem is again just past the head part right there. Come down in here with our tire iron, and now I gotta lift up on the whole tire and pry up and over so we get that bottom bead. Go around. And our tire is off the rim. Now, if I were just taking this tire off to repair it, do an internal patch, do some sort of service to it, I would, before I go throwing it on the ground, I would want to mark which side was the inside, which side was the outside on it with a tire crayon or something. But because we're replacing this, we can just take it, set it off to the side, and bring our new tire in here. Now, let's take a look at our new tire here. Before I go mounting it up on the, on the rim, um, I need to figure out how I wanna mount it on there. So we need to look and see if we see anything that tells us which face of it, which side of it we want facing out and which side we want facing in. On some tires, you will actually see the words outside, inside written, sometimes in smaller print, sometimes in big letters, somewhere around the outside of the tire. On this one, I don't see that. But as an example, here's the tire that we just took off. See those words right there, outside, and that's the side that was facing out towards us. Because it has the word outside right there, that tells me that that's the outside of the tire. 
this one because it does not have the word outside, inside, anywhere written on it. I can check both sides. I'm gonna mount it with the side with these painted dots facing out. And I'll talk about why that is in a minute. If it didn't have those painted dots, then we would mount it with the side with these painted lines on it facing out. And if it didn't have those either, then we would just pick a side and mount however we wanted to. Um, but I don't see any painted dots on this side, but I do on this side, and there's no writing that says inside, outside. So this is the side that we're gonna have facing out with those dots on it. And we'll talk about what that means uh, when I get it up on there. So now I'm gonna bring my tire up here with my painted dots facing out. And this is very, very important, guys. We have to lubricate the bead of the tire. This part right here, like I told you guys, I would show you. This part right here, this really thick looking part of the tire all the way around is inside the rim. The rim lip is out right here. This is the bead, and this is what seals the tire to the rim. I need to lubricate this so that it slides onto the rim nice and smooth. If I don't, and I just try to force this on with the machine, I can tear this part of the tire because it is just rubber. It has a metal band inside of it, but I, if I tear that rubber, it can't seal. If it can't seal, this brand new tire that I bought for this car is going in the dumpster. If this bead gets torn, there is no way to repair it. If you don't take good care when you're mounting up a brand new tire and lubricate the beads good, and you rip the bead, you're done. You're getting another new tire. Also, I wanna remove any stickers that are on the tire, because um, they're gonna not be needed anymore once I get it mounted on there. So now's a good time to do that as well. So spin the tire around. If there's any shipping labels on it or anything, at the very least, a brand new tire is gonna have a manufacturer label like this one that I just took off. So peel that off, any other stickers, and uh, then we're good to go. And real quick, before I go mounting my new tire on here, I wanna show you guys what the inside of the rim looks like in a couple places on it. The rim lip is like I was showing you guys when we took that wheel weight off, it's this lip basically that's out here on the edge of the rim and curves around. The bead of the tire seals up to that. And you can see where the old bead was sitting on there. See those lines? So the rim lip, this part right here where the tire or the rim drops down, this is called the drop center point. And you're gonna hear me use that term in just a minute because the drop center point is where I'm gonna have to push the tire down to in order for it to be able to stretch onto the rim basically. Drop center point is in the middle of the rim. Rim lip is on the outsides. Also inside the rim, here's what the inside of our valve stem looks like. Because this is just a rubber valve stem on an older car, there's no sensor on here. If this was a newer car, right here at the base of the valve stem, you would see a plastic sensor a couple inches big, right mounted up right there. That's your tire pressure sensor. If you are breaking the bead on the tire and you bring that jaw in here, it can crush that right off the end of the valve stem. Those are not cheap. Those are a couple hundred dollars each. You don't wanna be spending that when all you were planning to do is put new tires on a person's car. So be careful breaking the bead. On this instance, we just have a rubber valve stem and it's in good shape, so we're good to go. So now we gotta lubricate the beads on the tire. And I brought it back down off the rim because it's easier to do it down on the ground. You'll see why in a minute. To lubricate it, I'm gonna use some simple green soap. It's the quickest way. On all you gotta do is spray the beads all the way around. Don't be afraid to use too much, you won't. Spray them all the way around, just like that. And I gotta do the same thing on the inside. This is why it's easier to do it down here on the ground. Flip it around. Same thing, all the way around the bead. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna bring my tire up and set it on the rim, and I'll move you guys up so you can watch how I mount up the tire. So to mount the tire, first thing to mount the bottom bead, I'm gonna tip the tire back some, bring the head down, 
And on the head here, you guys are going to have to remember a little rhyme, if you will, a little saying. Because I'm going to have the bead over top the left side of the head, underneath the right side. I'm going to tuck it down to that drop center point, the middle part of the rim. Tuck it down and then step on the pedal and rotate. Now, I want to make sure my valve stem is just past my head for the top bead because I don't want to potentially damage it, especially if it has a sensor on it again. Even though we know this tire and rim does not have a tire pressure sensor, I want you guys to treat, when you're doing this, treat every rim and tire you deal with as if it does. Be careful where you have the valve stem. Be careful where you break the bead because you never know. Even if you've seen it, you never know. Just for force of habit, treat it as if you have a tire pressure sensor. The other thing is I want you guys to pay attention to those painted dots again because the yellow painted dot I want to have line up with my valve stem over here once I have it all mounted together. Now's the time to do that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want that dot all the way over here when the valve stem's over here. I want to get it lined up as close as I can, go over top, underneath, tuck it down to that drop center point, step on the pedal, rotate, and it stretches the tire around, pops into place. If you need to, to get that yellow dot lined up, you can probably muscle it a little bit, just like that. Perfect. Now, over here on the left side of the machine is a tire pressure gauge and an air hose. We need to seat the beads of our tire. So the way we're gonna do that is hook up this air hose, has a little clamp on it, just like a tire pressure gauge, to the valve stem. There's a pedal over here on the side of the machine that I'll show you guys in a minute. We're gonna step on that and it's gonna force air into the tire and we're listening for two pops, one, two. That's the bottom bead and top bead. Sometimes you'll hear more than that because sometimes the bead seats in two parts, but we need to hear at least two. One. One. Two. We're good to go. Now, when I take this back off, because there's no valve core in here, remember, all the air is going to shoot back out. So, I'm going to get my valve core and my valve core tool ready and do a little bit of quick action here. This takes practice. I don't expect you guys to be able to do this real quick the first time you mount up a tire on here, but you want to try to lose as little air as possible. So when I take this off, I already have my valve core set up in my tool and I'm going to quickly switch it in there so that I don't lose too much air. Get it snug, so it's still loose, still loose, snug, and then quarter turn. That's as tight as the valve core needs to be. If I keep cranking on this, you'll snap this valve core off inside the valve stem. You don't want to do that. So. Snug, quarter turn, that's it. Set our valve core tool back where it belongs. And now we've got our tire, new tire mounted on our rim. Our beads are seated, our valve core is back in. The last thing that we need to do is I'm gonna bring you guys over here. First of all, right there on the left-hand side of the machine, that's the pedal that controls the tire pressure, or the air pressure um, for the tire pressure gauge where we're putting air in to seat the beads. There's our tire pressure gauge up there. I'm gonna kind of step in the way here, so I'll move you guys back. Um, and I need to check my tire pressure and make sure that it is the correct pressure for what our car wants. In this case, it's 32 PSI. So bring this down, hook it up. And I'm up at 36, so if I needed to add pressure, I would step on this pedal. And that's that noise you hear, the knock, 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 that's it adding air pressure. If I want to take out, there's a button right below my pressure gauge here. And now I am right at 32 PSI. Make sure when you take this air hose back off of here that you hang it back up. 
Don't just let it drop to the ground. Don't hang it over here. It actually has a valve stem that it clamps to on the machine so that it's nice and secure. So now I need to get my tire and rim back off the machine. The way to do that, first pull these two little arms here to the right, lift up, just like that. Push down to the left, pull our lock out. And then take our tire and rim off the machine. Now our last and some of the most important steps of this process, number one, don't forget your center cap. Put that back in, right? And then, and that just clips into place like that. And what did I say about your valve stem cap? You never, ever, ever want to forget your valve stem cap. We don't want to mess up that valve port inside of there. So put that cap back on there and you're good to go. All right, guys, that's it. We got a new tire mounted up on this rim for this car that we're working on. Um, the next thing that you guys would have to do, anytime you have a tire off the machine, you have to balance it. That's going to be a separate video, how to do road force tire balancing. And that's the machine that's right over my shoulder here with that screen on it. That's a separate process, but uh, anytime you have a tire off the rim, you've got to balance it. So that's what's up next for this tire in particular. For you guys, make sure you go and fill out the questions that go along with this video. And we'll talk soon. Thanks, guys.